right then, yep, the time has come to increase the speed on my Sinclair C5. So I'm going to be upgrading this beauty from 12 volts to 24 volts. So that should take it from about 12 miles per hour to hopefully sort of 20, 23 miles per hour, that sort of speed on the flat. I'll also be upgrading eventually um, to lithium batteries. But just for the moment, I'll be um, doing the single motor, 24 volts, two lead acid batteries, um, just until I've got the cash and the funds available to purchase the next level batteries. Right, continue to watch if you fancy doing this yourself. Right, yes, hi all, welcome, welcome, yep, here we go. So thank you very much initially to Steve Gillett, much appreciate the advice um, on the forum, etc. Really good man, thank you very much for that. So what I've done here is put the twist grip on. Boom, twist throttle grip, I like it, I like it. Um, so the quick sort of summary, I guess, is that I normally have throttle button here and underneath sort of this section here would normally be the horn button. What I've done is, I've removed the horn button here and obviously put a standard bracket in place that way it can go underneath this and look sort of you know neat and on this side here i've removed the, the normal throttle button and put the horn button with the horn colored wiring on this side that way i can keep this piece here with the loom so it sort of all, all goes together and then you know if anyone ever needed to revert the Sinclair c5 back to stand in the future then obviously i've kind of got all the bits and bobs for it so that's that so this side here remains um otherwise untouched um on this side here, and once you remove all that, I had to basically polish up the metal underneath, otherwise I found it caught, it's ever so slightly caught on the throttle. So polished up, cleaned up, really, really easy, for sort of five minutes, that was that. Next up, um, I basically sprayed in some WD-40 and put a screwdriver in there carefully and ultimately managed to sort of relieve the pressure on it. These are really tight and then pulled it off. It's very, very difficult, because obviously you're, you don't want to damage the um, mechanism, obviously, and that, so you'd be really careful but end of the day, I've got it off, so that's off there. I then cut off about an inch of the plastic roughly on there to make sure this fit, this installed. I then had two old grips. So this is my normal grip from it, which is in good condition, so I kept that. I had two tattered grips, both of which had markings of that um, on, on the side. So that one there would obviously be for this side here normally. So obviously both of them must have rubbed on here, you know, on an old C5. Anyway, what I did is I cut off this part here with a blade, really, really easy, nice and straightforward. I then practiced different techniques of mounting this piece of rubber this way around, that way around, you know, the left side one on the right side and, and so on and so forth. And I ultimately found that you have to have the wiring part down the bottom here somewhere because it can't be too far forward otherwise it hits the, the bolt for this and obviously you want this at the right angle. So kind of like there was the lowest it could be, otherwise it's up a bit, and then you get a little bit less turning circle, because obviously if it's up a bit higher, it blatantly hits here. So that position down there was the best place. And then I wanted the cover with, the but with this button part here, obviously on this side, so it matches this one here, but this wasn't gonna happen basically. And I didn't wanna have rubber like this on this side, potentially catching with the um, twist grip throttle, I wanted to be some smooth plastic on here. So ultimately, that is the best way that I think that it works. And it stretches on nice and nice and tight on there as well. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. That looks good. Cut out a little notch on here. Not a cut, I'm not cut out too much. Also, I can cut a bit more if I want to, but I don't want to, don't want to cut it too much in case I need to adjust anything or move anything. And that's pretty good for the moment. Um, I always actually do cable ties on because I, 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 when I take this this um down the down the beach for my cruises, I put it on a roof rack of my car. So I always have a cable tie around anyway. So black cable tie around there, that should be nice. And I probably have to cut out you know an extra few mil, take it a little bit lower. But like I say, I don't want to do it yet until I've sort of tested it in case I need to move handlebars or sorry brake levers or swap brake levers or whatever. So I don't want to have to go and buy another one of those. Cool. That is it. Thank you. Right, and here we go, here we go. So yeah, boom, template. So what I did, of course, is remove the axle, very, very easy on mine, and the hoop, um, the light, etc. Move the electronics just to one side. Cool, giving you the, all that free space there. I then um, just measured it all up and get a bit of cardboard, obviously, and just um, drew it out, drew it a bit bigger, put it in place, spent a bit of time messing around here, just getting the, the slit in the right place. You can see that I initially made a slit way too big. So put some paper on there and a little bit, a little bit thinner. Put it in place, um, scored round it with a, a pen. And then once I was happy with it, I just then obviously made these holes just to sort of, just sort of lock, it in, lock it into position basically that it's gonna be. So I'm pleased with that. And then just sort of went round it again, fine tuned it, perfect. And what I've gone for is three millimeter aluminium, big sheet here. 
um, 20 quid delivered off eBay, no drama. You definitely could get away with absolutely thinner, thinner steel, but I wanted it the same as that on there, which is three millimeters, hence why I've gone for that. But I'd imagine there's 24 volts, you know, you don't exactly need it for strength. It's just there really for mounting stuff, I would say, that you could have gone for a bit thinner, you know, might make it a bit easier to drill and cut and all the rest of it. But, you know, that's, that's what it is now. It's three mil, same as the other one, so I'm happy, happy with that. Um, also, other thought I had right at the very end, and to be fair, I still potentially might even do this. I could have even left some additional steel up here. Then I'd have that extra space there to mount something. So I'm actually thinking for a Mark II. I'm going to double check against that Sinclair just to check nothing, there's nothing in the way, just in case, you know, that it's not going to work. But I might, you see, even if I've got a big piece of steel, go out here and bring it in like that. And then that way I can have, like, you know, the... um. Here can be, say, the porter, because you want it sort of you know, away from any sort of water spray and all that sort of stuff, if it is raining. And here could be, say, for example, the, the waterproof fuse box, you know, or just something else, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's just my thought anyway. So you might see a different video in a minute of me. Right then, yep, yeah, I'm now ready to complete the motor build. So thank you very much to Neil Cubit for this uh, metal insert. It's absolutely beautiful. Love that. And um, thank you, Sam, at the C5 Depot. He sent me some parts, including these beauties, which are his latest um, professionally 3D printed parts with has roller bearings in as well. So the key part for this is, you see this part here is flush, it's basically flush with the top, and that part there is recessed. I just checked with him, actually. You need to have the flat part, this side here, facing down against the insert, such as that. That's important. That. Beauty, absolutely beautiful. So these are these are lovely. So these basically reduce the friction, so you're going to get a fair amount of friction if you just use standard plastic ones on a gearbox for heating when you're going the speed and stuff. And these are definitely, definitely going to reduce um, the temperature and obviously roll beautifully. So I've got the recommended grease here, which I always use now on the Sinclair's. It's a red colour for that. Sam mentioned the technique is so say to put your finger over the end and then basically just force the grease in so it forces it inside the roller bearings and then obviously put some on the face here and of course some on around here on the outside a decent amount and then um install it and then you're good to go basically so just as a reminder i've got the cooling mods already in here which I've done ages ago when i did the 12 volt sort of version of it plus i've got the um plus i've also drilled out these sections right yeah so do what sam said is basically forced the grease into each of the gears um, and obviously applied loads sort of around the area um, and yeah pushed it on fit installed beautifully so thank you neil feels feels good and this is a brand new bearing on the top there then um that's also been fully cleaned but that amount of grease in it there i'm just gonna wipe down right around uh around the edges now and then i can clip that on and i'll give it a few revs on the um just on the battery just sort of slowly just to sort of bed the grease in that's all and then that's as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, that is good to go. Nice. Right then, yep. So I've cut out the um, aluminium plate. Looking really good. Like I say, I think I would definitely recommend going thinner. I think like um two mil, for example, or maybe maybe one and a half possibly as well. But I think two mil and twenty-four volts is definitely good enough. Three mil is a bit thick basically, a little bit little bit harder to work with, but easy to cut. So what I'm gonna do now is um I'm going to obviously I've clamped it down. I'm now just gonna run a bolt nut and bolt just through say here somewhere on both sides um probably just one actually to be honest with you i think and then of course once the axle's on of course it will clamp down here so yeah that's a strategy so yeah and here we go yep so it's now cut so basically that did take freaking ages um to do it neatly and i just obviously gone around the edges filed it in a second i'm going to peel off this protective sheet on the top there's also one on the bottom so i'll peel that off um yeah it installs nicely gone for a slightly larger slightly sort of larger hole here when it all sort of clamps down obviously it bends ever so slightly because the chassis sort of tilts downwards this part here is also bent up slightly as well and basically um i don't know if i filmed it or not actually but i put it into, into position and then obviously say it tilts upwards it needs to be it needs to sort of like be clamped in the middle here so i then clamped it on the sides and here and here and i then from underneath i then drilled the, the holes here and here and put um, a bolt a bolt through, which is basically here, which I'll show in a minute. And that, that and obviously just pulled it into shape. And then when it's in when it's in position, I was then able to drill from underneath 
underneath here under the chassis on both sides underneath. right yes so the plate looks really really good so yeah uh, as you see now i've just basically put this roughly in place obviously in a minute I'll, I'll lift this up to get this sort of spot on and i've just marked it up roughly um and then i'm gonna square it up and then cut that piece out then i think i can then bolt this whole thing on which is basically the aim for today is to do that nice that's that's looking um pretty good i would say i don't want to be too skimpy on this i want to give it a reasonable amount of um gap as well so um right yes finally it's done so i've just gone over and just given a quick brush over with some 60 grit um as you'll see underneath here i've also made a perfect template um now obviously that means i can if i want to do any more of these spare a lot of efforts i could um, at least cut the piece of aluminium in advance and then lay it in place bend this piece here up slightly and then effectively just clamp it down and then once it happily was lined up then run the drill bit through from underneath so through the chassis first and um, that way obviously you create the holes in the perfect positions um and then you can then sort of obviously cut this piece here out then you can put the whole thing on then you can mark it up and drill out drill out the hole for this one here i've gone here a bit a little bit larger than the actual hole because of course it bends this once it's clamped down it sort of bends slightly at an angle around this sort of position here so that way it's got a bit of extra sort of capacity for the hole to line up and then of course I've got two extra holes here to clamp it down to the chassis which i'll show you guys in a minute um so and of course for that you once you sort of put it in place clamp it all down do these right yep there we go that's the end of day one it's looking really really good it took a lot lot longer than i expected um you know just going backs and forwards backs and forwards drilling out holes had a few little bolt holes issues you know uh, were a bit tricky like this bolt here and so I had to sort of go through with a drill from underneath just to widen the aluminium a little, a little bit sort of just a fraction then that and then just re-tap it and that, that helped um it's a little bit dirty but i'm really pleased with the brushed effect that looks really really nice Everything seems to be good. Axle spins nicely and all that. So I think that's good. You can't really tell until you sort of crank it up and put the power on. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I would have put the motor on now, but there's no point because I, really, I remembered I needed to twist the wires together. Plus also solder on some sort of noise suppressing, I think it was, parts from 4QD. So I thought there's no point in putting the motor in. I might as well have the motor to hand on the bench where I can solder on those components and like put on those little um those little round circular things around the wires you, you'll get to see them on video too um and then the motor can go in then i can then check the motor on 12 volts just to make sure that the axle is straight and smooth and it's not you know causing any issues just just in case you know where obviously put this plate in obviously it might have might have rejigged and something potentially um otherwise the body bolts are back in and um everything's looking good to see all the wiring still there of course i need to rem um, potentially remove that but for now i'll leave it in place because i might need that basically yeah and it's looking really good but yeah it took a lot longer than i expected anyway um t the next job is to say do the motor put the motor in test it fine after that i'm then going to sort of start to mount the electronics and i've got this extra bit of capacity here and here as well which is i think i think is potentially quite useful so i better put the porter um you know somewhere like this maybe because it needs to be sort of kept upright so, so the heat dissipates that's sort of like what is suggested so i'm having like, a lot of room for the porter there somewhere um or here or, you know that's because of the motor and fan at the cost of there and then the fuse box and then the step down as well so a few things to go in um so i mounted it all roughly in place i basically drilled out all the holes i had to order some nylock nuts and some more m4 allen key headed um, bolts because i want it all looking absolutely sweet so those should arrive in the next couple of days 